This is Loopline. In this video, I want to cover the Scrapebox Redirect Checker add-on. So, if you don't have it installed, you're going to go to Add-ons, Show Available Add-ons, find the Redirect Checker, and then go here to install it. And once you're done, close out here, go to Add-ons, and we're going to launch the Redirect Checker add-on right here. I happen to have a list of URLs that I randomly scraped up here, and then I also randomize the URLs because it's a lot of the same domains, so I don't want to hit the same domain in a row. I also have 50 private proxies loaded. You wouldn't have to have proxies loaded for this add-on because you're just loading the in-site, um, but you know, obviously you wouldn't want to do like one domain and use 20 connections because you're hitting with one IP address. Uh, you probably want to use proxies, otherwise the in-site could simply ban your IP. The other thing to keep in mind, which we'll talk about in a moment, is hammering. So let's load up the list of URLs. I'm going to do it from the harvester. Pretty standard start and stop buttons. Um, some removal filter options and export, which we'll talk about afterwards. And then settings, we're just talking about connections. Bearing in mind, if this is a lot of unique domains, I can go higher, even without proxies. So if I have like 5,000 domains um, that are mixed up in here, I could go pretty high, as high as my bandwidth could handle it anyways. And not have an issue but if I had like one domain or three domains in here and I run this thing up to 500 connections those 500 connections could be hitting one or two or three domains at once so that's hundreds of connections per domain now if you have enough proxies that might not be a problem from the standpoint of getting your IP banned whereas obviously if you use 500 connections on one domain without proxies not only are you going to get your IP banned, they might file a complaint with your um, ISP provider saying that you're hammering on their website and that sort of thing. Um, but you obviously could take down a site because, you know, if you get a $5, a site on $5 hosting and you hit it with 500 connections, the site's just going to crash. Uh, the hosting provider is going to say, nope, we're going to deny the connections, and then you're not going to get the data that you want anyway. So it makes sense to balance this out with the number of unique domains, randomizing the URLs can help, um, and obviously using proxies if you're using uh, a lot of the same domains themselves. But keep it closer to the green, and the closer to the green, the better. So I'm just go right back to 20 here where it was set. Timeout, again, is pretty basic. You know, if you have a slower connection, you want a higher timeout. If you have a faster connection, keeping it here at like 20 or something is probably fine. Again, you know, slower proxies, higher timeout, that sort of thing and the number of connections that you have the more connections the higher the timeout in general you probably want you don't want to go something like this because obviously it just doesn't make sense to do that so anyways let me run this back here to something reasonable and we can go through here and see how this actually works and let's hit start and run it through we'll see that it gives us a source url the starting url the end url that it's redirected to which is going to be the same if there are no redirects the count of redirects that scrapebox found the code and then whether or not we're completed and that sort of thing so as we go through here we can see here's one redirect with a 301 going down there's more one redirect on a 302 um, we can see some will have different things like meta redirects or here's a meta redirect, for instance. Others will have a higher count of redirects. Here's three redirects. You can see it started out with this long URL here, numbers on the end, and redirects to a more friendly URL, boats for sale, and so on and so forth. So we'll stop it. And here we can do some removal options. We can remove entries with errors and remove entries with no redirect. So let's just remove entries with no redirect. Keep it simple. And then um, I'm going to go ahead and remove ones with errors too. And we can see lots of different redirects as we go through here and different meta ones, 302, 301, that sort of thing. Obviously, most of them are going to be 300 series or meta just because. Um, and for the most part, I think uh, three was the highest I saw on this particular list of count of redirects. But obviously, Facebook has a couple of redirects going on, that sort of thing. Now I have the choice to export. I can export redirects as text file or an Excel file. Um, which will give me all columns if I do an Excel file and then I can sort them in Excel or I can export them as a text file and you know just get the actual redirect URLs which is going to be the end target URL and so that is how the redirect checker works very handy to determine the end URL that something resolves to uh, could be used as testing on your own site to see if it's working properly or a client site or could just be used in general to find the end URL for a site that's redirecting and that is the scrapebox redirect checker add-on 
Thanks for watching this Scrapebox video. For more Scrapebox videos, click the subscribe button on your screen or click the subscribe button down below.